my name is Anna Grace. Uh, both those names actually have the same uh, meaning, kind of like, oh, it's of God's grace is what it means. And so a lot of people say, you're twice blessed, because uh, <laughs> both my names mean the exact same thing. Um, I'm 20, um, soon to be 21 as of two days from now, and I am the oldest of three sisters. I'm currently living um, in Colorado, uh, just along the Front Range. The mountains are beautiful here. We've got uh, a pet named Mocha. She's this two-pound chihuahua. I absolutely adore um, studying and classical music. I'm a violinist. Uh, I love to read. I journal. I have a, a, a variant of primary HLH. Um, more specifically, it's been classified as digenic, um, meaning there are two separate heterozygous mutations on different genes that are interacting with one another. So what would normally be an autosomal recessive disorder is still presenting in me even though I only have one copy, one bad copy of the genes involved. It's something that uh, presented much later on. Um, for me, it, I was 17 and a half. Most of the time, what I've been told is uh, it presents most often in infancy. And so the fact that it presented much later on uh, is a little unusual in and of itself. And I had my first run-in with HLH back in April of 2020, about three weeks um, after the quarantine was implemented during COVID. Um, and since then, I've had a couple of other flares that were very concerning for HLH um, as recently as this last January. And uh, right now we're just in the process of trying to stabilize to get to um, a more effective treatment. I went into the ER um, with a fever and uh, I was presumed septic for five and a half days um, because I have an existing central line and so they, they suspected you, well yeah, you probably have a bloodstream infection, but cultures were continually negative and then um, my bone marrow stopped producing blood cells and I developed DIC and it wasn't until I was hemorrhaging that someone, um, a, a fellow who was on the admitting team at that time, uh, had happened to complete his residency at Cincy Children's and thought, you know, maybe we should rule HLH out, let's do a couple of tests and it was a really good thing that they did. Um, so five and a half days, and I was misdiagnosed uh, with some very serious symptoms. I had a mutual connection at that time, um, and they, although they're not an ambassador themselves, they definitely directed a lot of their followers toward, hey, look at this organization for information. And so it was over social media that I was aware of it. And then I sought some of those resources out on my own years later, uh, after I kind of was like, you know, this is a bit isolating and um, there's still a lot of unknowns about my case and why not? Um, why not uh, look at what resources were available? So it came to mind a couple years after I had first been aware of it. I think for some context, I am someone who is medically complex. I've been ill for a decade. I've had issues with myopathy and neuropathy, and then um, it seems like multiple uh, multiple paths of immune dysregulation has, has caused a lot of this. Um, but in terms of HLH in and of itself, 
uh, the complications from some of these other conditions has delayed bone marrow transplant. Right now, we're trying to uh, jumpstart my GI motility so that I'm not as high at risk of um, failing the preparative regimen for a, a bone marrow transplant. So we're, we're sort of in limbo and I've not done very well um, for a good three years now. Um, but either way, we've still been able to get it into remission more than once, uh, which is a, a really good thing in, in my situation. <laughs> A lot of the day-to-day -day things um, that pertain to my health, um, things that would be considered very abnormal by most people's standards have been normalized. And so, um, you know, I'm taking medications, I'm setting up infusions, I'm in and out of the hospital. I was actually, um, uh, in the ICU over the weekend, um, mm -hmm. and I got out last night, <laughs> so, uh, and this morning I'm just right back in the swing of things. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think from experience, uh, it's made it easier to manage what seems like a pretty impossible situation. Um, so I, I do get by, um, but... It, it definitely impacts my ability to work and to study. Um, I can't travel. There's, there's quite a bit that it impacts, but we make the most of it. <laughs> I have a wonderful support team. Um, my parents and siblings, but also friends and teachers and mentors who um, have really provided me a lot of uh, support and encouragement as I undergo um, treatment that is uh, a nightmare to go through. Um, and then really, I think also a, a desire for myself to live the life I've been given. Um, I know people who have passed away from uh, various forms of histiocytosis, the most recent of which was a friend who passed on of HLH, and um, they certainly didn't get to live as long as they would have liked, and I feel like it's all the more motivation for me to live every day to the fullest and every day like it's your last because you never know when uh, something will happen and where do I find motivation. Uh, certainly my support people but also from other Histio warriors and angels. Um, how life-threatening it is. Uh, it's, it's really um, hard to try and explain to other people um, exactly how serious this particular diagnosis is. Um, and I think a lot of that, rightfully, is that people don't know what it is. Um, but sometimes it can be a, a little difficult to try and uh, explain, hey, this is the kind these are the kinds of, of complications that I might be up against um, and really explaining what HLH in particular is um, we've uh, I certainly um, have described HLH as like genetic sepsis and that's really the only way that I can give someone an idea but even then that's not entirely accurate so um, it can be, it can be a challenge to try and talk about that, um, and to have it effectively communicated <laughs> and understood. Um, and I think the other thing is that it impacts so much about day-to-day -day life and people, I think, again, rightfully are oblivious to what the medical life is, 
Um, and that's a good thing. People shouldn't be living sick. Um, but it's sometimes also a little difficult to have uh, others understand um, that, no, sometimes I really can't do a certain activity or why I might be canceling something last minute, even even if it's been months in the making. Um, so probably the uh, risk and um, the day-to-day -day life, people really don't understand. At the end of the day, uh, I think the best solution to this problem is, is bringing it up, talking about it. So, um, this is uh, maybe a brief story time, but the first time I had HLH, um, uh, again, I had a mutual connection at that time, and in their case, they were very, very sick. Um, and it, this happened about eight months before I first had it. So when I was diagnosed with it, um, I was perhaps unlucky enough to really understand exactly what was going on when it was said, because I had seen it happen in someone else. Um, and there was a pocket of time where they didn't know if I was going to live. Um, they pulled my mom out of the room and told her, hey, DIC can lead to necrosis of your limbs. She could lose her limbs to this. She could uh, go into liver failure. Um, and it was jarring. Um, and two weeks later, they, they, in the meantime, had gotten it under control and I was able to discharge from the hospital. Um, and I walked out of the hospital on my own um, after being told that they weren't certain I was gonna be leaving the hospital alive. And when I walked out of the hospital after having this really um, extreme, scary experience, I had noticed that the grass was very green and um, while I was in the hospital, uh, my region transitioned from winter to spring. And when I noticed this grass, then I noticed the sky was so blue. Um, and the flower pots outside the hospital had petunias of all different colors. And then once I got home, you could hear the birds singing, this tiny little dog. Um, has really um, just overpowered me with love that I can't even I can't even comprehend and to see how relieved my family members were when I was home um, what that did for me that very moment walking out of that hospital um, was it taught me what it really means to appreciate things in this world I did not know how much I took things for granted. Um, and I think we all like to say at one time or another, uh, yeah, I mean, don't take things for granted, enjoy every little thing. But um, I think for me, I really didn't understand what that truly meant um, until I almost lost it. And um, since that day, every day since, um, I have, uh, lived life enjoying the smallest of things and just taking time to smell the roses because um, you don't know when your time is up and uh, I thought that mine was at, at that particular time but um, regardless I think there's so much about this world and about other people you can appreciate um, and HLH was what taught me that. As I mentioned earlier, I really, really love studying. Um, but as I have gotten sicker, that was um, something that became much harder. I had to medically withdraw um, multiple times in high school, and it took me an additional three semesters to actually graduate and I finally got my diploma at the beginning of this year at 20. Um, 
And at that point, I just kind of took a step back and I'm like, you know, I know you'd like to hop straight into college and you've been accepted to all these different places, but you have to actually have your medical problem dialed in and managed uh, in such a way that I can be functional um, before you dive into um, more in-depth studying. And so I think the biggest thing I'm looking forward to is um, studying. And um, for a while, I've, I've been pretty interested in theology um, and in pharmacy. And so I think it's probably going to be one or the other. Um, I don't know exactly where or when or how that will happen, but um, I'm confident that it will at some point and it helps me uh, to get through the smallest moments of the day knowing that everything that I do is um, for the education that I am looking forward to pursuing. Um, I think really, uh, for every person to, to each, to each their own, um, we are all on our own different paths, um, and they are not all going to look the same. And even though, for example, I understand, um, that my variant of, uh, Histio, HLH, has unfortunately kill people um that does not necessarily mean that that is the path i'm on um and i think none of us really truly know where we're gonna head and that should be a reason to keep hopeful um because your story is yours and your journey is yours and again you you grow through what you go through, um, and each of us has a very unique path. Um, and even though not everyone with um, Histio survives, um, a lot of people with Histio do. Um, and I, I feel like uh, it's an honor for me, at least, to be able to carry the torch for um, not just those like me, um, but those who are unable to. Um, and uh, I think at the end of the day, um, everything happens for a reason and we all will eventually know exactly um, why what happened needed to happen in order to become the people we are. I, I really want uh, my story to help others be hopeful as well.